We understand that families going through divorce situations are dealing with a special set of circumstances. And we also recognize that children in these situations are dealing with many uh, different types of feelings of anger and grief and concern about their futures. And many of the adults also deal with, with those circumstances. And what we want to do is assist families that are going through the situation in, in making sure that we help the children. Uh, the children, whether, whether the parents realize it or not or see it going on, uh, they're going through a lot of pain. Uh, and the parents that recognize that and see that are able to uh, change their behavior and their, their actions in order to help the children. We believe this project, this videotape, will be an excellent educational tool. You can't ever seem to communicate with him um, over anything. Why would we be able to discuss the children? My being She's doing it. She's doing it just because she knows that's the one way left that she can yank my chain. $750 a month per child. Who needs $750 a month per child to raise a kid? It's unnecessary. It's, it's, it's extravagant. Our marriage for many years was just all about him. He had to work, work, work. You know, we need all this money. We need to buy this. We need a boat. We need that. And he complains about the money he has to give me. I was accustomed. Our kids are accustomed to a certain kind of lifestyle. Just, just because I don't love her anymore does not mean that I don't love the children. I wanted to know what was happening in a family, I learned not to ask the adults, I learned to ask the kids. The kids know more about family dynamics than the adults. The kids know everything, they're little blank pages that parents are constantly writing on um, directly and indirectly, consciously and subconsciously. And it's not just about words or what kids hear, it's about behaviors. Well I can tell you this, I've had somebody say to me, oh children are resilient they can get through this they'll get through this and yes we're all resilient but we all can be wounded and scarred for life and children can be scarred when you're dealing with two people they love and parents who have that mentality need to be educated When my family, you know, was divorced and I went back and forth from my dad's to my mom's, um, they kind of had put me in the middle, you know, would tell me things, and I, don't, I didn't think that was right. It used to get me really angry. And I, I thought I had to defend both of them, you know, to the other one. Both would end up saying hurtful things to me about the other person, which, looking back on it, just destroyed a lot more things than my relation with the other parent. I felt really sad. But I never really tried to show it. Hey, Dad. Yeah, I'm okay. Nothing. Tell your dad. Tell your dad that he needs to send a child support check. I haven't gotten it yet. Go ahead, tell him. Yeah, Dad, I know. I need the child support. Tell him if he doesn't send the child support, you're not going to go spend the weekend with him. I don't know, Dad. I'm serious. He needs to send that child support, otherwise you're not going over there. He said he sent it. Well, I haven't received it, so he needs to get it in the mail quick. He's lying. Oh, he sent it. If he said that, he sent it. Well, until I get it, you're not going over there. And you tell him that. Dad, I can't go to see you until she gets the child support. He's a very strict parent. He was always stricter than me, and he, he expects me to be like that. Well, I'm not going to be like that because I don't think, I think he's too strict. I'm a little bit easier on them, and they seem to like that better, and they respond to that better. He doesn't think so, and, you know, they complain to me all the time about how mean their dad is. So, you know, they like it that I'm a little bit nicer to them, and... I don't think they're any confused about how the rules are here and how the rules are there. They're old enough to know that the rules are different. They're not exactly doing cartwheels to see their mother. That's something they have to do. Having them visit her is its like two steps back for one step forward in their development. 
bad habits, uh, bad experiences. I don't think I wish her any ill will. Uh, I think it's ideally she would stay as far away from the kids as, as she could, but she won't, and I have to live with that. And I guess I will because the court tells me to, but I don't have to like it. What are you guys doing? Homework. Didn't you do homework this weekend? Yeah. Not very much, obviously, if you're still doing it now. We had a lot. What'd you guys do all weekend? Spend time with Dad. Well, now you come home, and I'd like to spend a little time with you. And you have to spend time doing your homework, which you should have done this weekend. You guys know better. What'd you guys eat? Food. Fast food, I'm sure. What time did you guys go to bed at night? 11. See, that's what I mean. You guys go to his house, and everything's out the window. You guys know what time you're supposed to go to bed at, you know what you're supposed to eat, you know what you're supposed to do your homework. Your dad needs to grow up. We have rules. I'm tired of this. Well, my mom tried to turn me against my stepmom. And, you know, so I hated my stepmom after a while. I was like, oh, I don't like her. And, you know, I had problems with that. And until finally I was like, I'm not gonna do this. I'm not, I'm not gonna sit here and listen to my mom. And, you know, my dad would be like, your mom doesn't do this right, and, you know, you need to watch her or whatever. And I was like, Dad, you know, it's not, not for you to say, I don't need to do this. I'm not the adult, you know. A lot of parents don't realize they're doing these overt things that can affect children. Um, some would be calling at inopportune times when one parent's trying to have a routine with the child. Other parents enmesh themselves with the child when they're trying to let go of them, calling 10 or 15 times within an afternoon, saying how much they miss them, not letting them have a picture around of the other parent, removing the other parent, if you will, from their lives in subtle ways. Um, it's very difficult for children. They get very frustrated, afraid, I had to deal with not feeling as close with my father because I didn't see him as much. I had to deal, I don't know, with being different, with having two Christmases and two birthdays and two Easter's and two everything. Well, it's difficult because you don't know if it's going to be bad, you don't know if you're going to be scared, and you don't know if another person's going to be me because it's like you're far away from your family and it's like you're in a stranger's house that you've never been in before. It's like scary sometimes. Like the first night is like so scary because you mostly never be with your mom and dad together. Like I remember my 10th birthday very distinctly. I think it was the night of it. My mom came in to drop me off because I had spent the weekend with her. Came into my dad's house. Um, and something happened. Maybe we were late, maybe she said something wrong, I don't, I don't really remember, but I remember my dad yelling at my mom so bad. And I was thinking, how can you do this? You might be mad at each other, but it's my 10th birthday. I'm never gonna have a 10th birthday again. You know, I'm, I'm two digits now. <laughs> um, and so there was just a lot of sadness, personal sadness that I really never told anyone about or shared with friends or anything like that. I said, why are you fighting? And stop fighting and then I just walked down and then I thought I heard them say our children are getting mad let's separate I remember as a kid just thinking that this is never gonna make sense to me and I think it's just gonna be a permanent hole for the rest of my life no matter what I do no matter who I talk to no matter what the situation is okay hi How's it going? Good. How was your weekend? That's fun. Dad, Terry, and I went out and went and skied. I don't know how you can have fun with her. She's the reason the family's not together. Dad said he didn't even know her when he lived with us. He's lying. He did. You didn't even want to know about my weekend, did you? You just want to know about him. You don't yeah. understand. I do all the work. He doesn't do anything. He has all the fun. Just because you hate him doesn't mean I have to hate him also. I didn't say that, but you just don't understand. He's the one that's got the best part of the deal. The day you tell your children you're going to get divorced, parenting changes. 
you are parenting a child of divorce, which is different than parenting a child that's in your home in a you know, regular family setting. On one hand, you're going to need to grieve what happened in your marriage, that your relationship ended, that your life has changed, and um, you're going to have emotions about that. Somewhere in the process, you're going to have emotions about your marriage ending. Separate that from learning how to get along for your children's sake. In a perfect world, at graduation, I would have said, I'm really nervous for the two of you being here. And I, I planned, actually, this whole scenario out in my head, had they said a little comment on the side to one another. And I thought, in a perfect world, I would sit them down and say, you know, I only graduate from college one time. And I only graduate from Notre Dame one time. And not that I think that's any better than anything else in life but you're here for me and I worked really hard to get where I am and so if the two of you could just put whatever issues you have aside and focus the attention on me for one weekend I would appreciate it um, and of course that would be in a perfect world that would that would be pretty scary to say to them You know, I just can't do this anymore. He's not going to be in mine or my children's lives anymore. I will not listen to anything he has to say anymore. He is unreasonable, and I just don't understand him, and I will not. I don't, I don't want to see him anymore. I just don't. He has put us through so much that I just don't, can't even stand to think about him anymore. You know, I understand where you're coming from. You know, I remember feeling that way early on in my divorce. But, you know, there's a point where you got to get past that because your kids really need him. You know, I'm sorry, but you don't understand. You don't know him. He is just, he's unreasonable. You can't say anything to him. He wants it his way all the time. He's not going to be in our lives anymore. We know we're just going to disappear and he won't talk to us any longer. I don't care. I just don't care. Yeah, like I said, I understand because I, I, I felt that way about my ex for a long time. But, you know, you got like I said, you got to get past that because... There's a point where, you know, your kids are going to really miss the relationship. And they really need, they really need him in, in their lives. So, um, I don't know how long it's going to take you, but I know at some point, you may need to get some counseling. That's what I had to do. I had to get counseling in order to see, you know, and, and work out my problems and not let my feelings for him affect my children. Because my children really loved him, and they really wanted to see him and they wanted to be able to go, and they didn't want to upset me, but they still wanted to be able uh, to see him. And for a long time, I was letting my feelings affect their relationship with their dad, and that really hurt them. If you are appreciating your child's love for the other parent, the time they spend with them, even if it's different than yours, even if it involves a bigger ordeal, more financially, um, uh, resourceful situation if you're enjoying that situation for your child listening to their excitement listening to their feelings about loving to be with my mom I love to be with my dad again you're contributing to their self-esteem which when they hug your neck or say gee mom thanks for listening to that or thanks dad I, I love it when I can talk about mom that is such a win for you versus the child who can never mention the other parent's name in their house. If I could have told my parents, you know, make sure this is what you want, make sure what you're doing is right and that above all things this is vastly more difficult for your kids than it is for you because you're making the decision for yourself and you get on with your life but kids don't know, I don't think kids know how to do that. At the same time to be able to to remind your kids that you know this happened and it happened because of your other parent and I but to say that you know as many times as you can to be able to say that I do still love you you know if you if you really do and you care about your kids remind them because it's so easy as a kid to forget that and to second guess that continually continually these cases of alienating behavior are probably the most difficult cases that we have to deal with in the post-divorce context. It also comes up pre-divorce, but for the most part it comes up after the divorce. 
and is generally long-standing and therefore the threat to children is extremely severe. And I just can't emphasize enough to both parents and judges the effects of high conflict, persistent high conflict on children. And it's something that needs to be addressed in each of these cases because if it persists, there's little question in my mind that there will be damage to the emotional damage to the children.